Recording in progress.
Uh, good morning, all. Could the iPhone user please identify themselves? The iPhone um, user. Good morning, can... Dennis Joseph. Hello. Logged in now. Huh? Morning. Morning. Is that Mr. Mr. Joseph with the iPhone? Joseph, yeah. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks yourself, sir. Good right. I'm fine. Thank okay. you. Okay. Let, 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 let me. Let me try and change the name. Let me rename you.
morning all morning and report morning 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 and report morning sir morning morning and report please i'm i'm having because it's overcast I'm not sure whether I must leave you. Where am I? My network, my network is so bad. Uh, I, I may not. I mean, I'm going to be on and uh, off, but I'm in the meeting. Yeah. I'm not feeling well. I'm not feeling but well, I'm okay. but yeah. I'm not... Take care. Yeah. Take care. But the problem now with me is overcast and the network is not right. And I will just trying to switch off my my phone because that office that I usually go to is it's just not open, it's closed. Okay, we're taking note of what okay. you're saying. Okay, thank you. Thank Minutes left. I'm checking members here. Can you Zolega or Ujabu try to get members? We we'll are left to two minutes, but uh, we members are not on the platform. Morning, Chairperson. Dennis Joseph. Uh, good morning, no, all. I'm, I'm on the platform. Yes. Morning. Good morning, uh, Honorable Joseph. I've seen. Yourself, Honorable Mshongo, myself. Those are only members on the platform. Honorable Minister is here. DM is here. Members are not here. Not all the members who are here. Can our staff assist to call members to join? I don't know what's going on. Honorable Malomane joined. We cannot start with a meeting which is not correcting. I don't know what's going on with other members. One minute left. Honorable Sabia joined. Honorable Joseph, Honorable Malomani, Honorable Veronica. Honorable um, Honorable members, I'm having a very bad network uh, with the department and the uh, our visitors. Uh, I would love to switch off my video today uh, before I'm being cut off. Uh, let me take this opportunity, honorable members, to greet uh, the minister, the deputy minister, honorable members who are on the platform, and uh, our staff, our visitors. Uh, today we're starting the way, this meeting with sad news of uh, one of the son of the soil uh, who pass on. Uh, which is Mungingo Sinduri. Our felt condolences to the family and to the uh, number two family, which is the club and with the 
to all the fraternity of sport, especially the soccer. But also, honorable members, uh, let me take this opportunity uh, to thank those members who took uh, their en uh, entitlements and, and visited um, uh, and welcoming of the Springbok when they landed in our soil. Uh, you can take it very lightly of what we have done. We have presented the committee at large and you supported our ministry who has been with uh, the Springbok. But also I must say that uh, honorable members, the minister, I'm suspecting that what I've noticed uh, all of uh, leaders and the rest, they were congratulating and also with our good selves. But no one, honorable members, even on the day that they visited us in parliament, recognized that there are two committees in this parliament who made things happen. Uh, when uh, this transformation uh, was not there, when we were trying to implement, it was these members uh, which were trying to implement the policy of the government. It was not easy, uh, honorable members. And, and uh, some of us we are proud of uh, this committee. Uh, this is a second cup uh, in, in, in your uh, time. Uh, so this is not uh, just that thing by the way, but I do feel that seemingly no one is recognizing the, the, your endeavors that today uh, we joined uh, the, the, the leadership who started this transformation and ma make, made it to be possible that any committee which is dealing with the sport must uh, make it sure that it happened. We are getting there and we are proud that uh, the three uh, the other uh, cups which were not in, we did make that the accountability, which we are not 100% or 90% there, but will we'll, we'll make uh, the government of the day uh, proud that we are doing our oversight. Today, we're still waiting for one of those other a, a clubs or entity or a, what can one of the another sport a fraternity, which it was even very hard even to themselves to accept that a, as a committee to a government who want this transformation, a, your cricket. You all know how it was not easy to handle the issues of the cricket, the issues of former players uh, in this committee. We know even the commissioners that uh, when we wanted that report, uh, we were like as if we are not reasonable. Thank you, honorable members. Keep it up with the work that we are doing. Uh, uh, some of us, we do recognize that. But also, can we also rejoice uh, that ho hockey men also, uh, they are doing well. Uh, I'm suspecting one other time, uh, whilst I was in another house, whenever we were going, um, you either with the IPU uh, or SADAC, when uh, people meet us in other countries, African countries or any other country, when they were looking at us, they will be saying that, hey, this is this is Mandela, Mandela. Meet it that you are coming from South Africa because 2010, uh, uh, you know what happened. And seemingly then when the soccer was that soccer uh, of Ohadebe and Dr. Kumaro, 
we all know that uh, if you want a soccer, come to South Africa. But as we are speaking now, uh, if you want rugby, uh, come to South Africa. If you want um, the soccer in the in the in the female, uh, come to South Africa for banyana banyana. I can I can mention all the proteas who are hoping that they are going to do uh, all uh, what you are, you are looking at. Uh, by those words, I'm saying that condolences to the family of Ntuli and, and maybe just a, a one minute uh, of silence, a prayer uh, to the family and to the country. We've lost a star. May his soul rest in peace. Uh, uh, Department of Sports, Arts and Culture, also we are proud of you. When one of us, uh, Mr. CBC, passed on, you were part of us. You sent uh, condolences to uh, the family which we presented. Uh, we are proud of you knowing uh, when uh, one of us departing, you, 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 you confirmed by saying that uh, he was with us and thanking all the members who did visit the, the, the family. Um, uh, today, uh, we are, I'm also welcoming um, what you call the, the, our visitors. With our visitors, I'm suspecting that we can be pleased uh, uh, when they are presenting minister uh, today that uh, there are sharp things that will be happy if they can respond or on, I must say from the very onset that uh, NSA, uh, um, NLS, NLSA, uh, you know uh, what what is not right and we are hoping that you will respond accordingly as this committee, we've read your documents and we've seen that also your three consecutive years, uh, you having qualified audit findings. And today, uh, you, we want you to tell us, let alone the department, uh, that maybe they are not even happy, even themselves. But as this committee, when we are reading, your know, presentation and the presentation from the department uh, surely today we want a clarification. We cannot uh, go and debate uh, whilst we are not knowing why uh, these things are happening uh, in your presence. With those words, uh, there are members who are going to uh, attend physically in parliament. Uh, the department today is being represented by our minister, by our uh, D DM. Uh, if I can uh, ask apologies uh, from this, uh, the staff of the committee, please. Uh, good morning, Chair. Good morning, members. Good morning, everyone on the platform. We do not have any apologies, Chairperson, today. Thank you. To the members, uh, uh, in case that there is a member who uh, passed the apology to one of us, they are not. Um, to you, uh, acting DJ, do you have apologies? Good morning, um, Chairperson. Uh, good morning. Um, just trying to get my, always does this to me. Um, good morning to um, the members, morning to Minister and Deputy Minister, Chairperson of the um, Board of the NLSA and my colleagues. At this point, I do not have any apologies, uh, Chair. Um, my colleagues um, have been struggling to join, but I'm just trying to check whether they've joined now. The CFO uh, was struggling, DDG and Dima was struggling to join, but they would be joining the meeting. So I do not have any apologies on the side of um, management. Thanks, Chair. 
thank you ATMTG can now uh, ask the apology from you and LSA uh, if uh, who are here and do you have apologies? National Library of South Africa. Good morning, Chairperson. We have a, a, a few apologies from some of our board members, uh, uh, which are, it's um, uh, Mr. Netarani, Mr. Puti Pukuje, and Ms. Kanyi Tubazane. Those are the board members who were unable to join us. We're having all other board members, including uh, the, uh, the executives. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you so much, uh, Chairperson. Um, honorable members, can I ask you to adopt this agenda? Okay. Yes. Honorable Deputy Minister. Honorable Deputy Minister. Deputy Minister Chair, we just want yes. to, to let you know that uh, we have other meetings that uh, there is a cabinet committee, there is other meetings, but we are here. I'm just saying if in the event you you don't see us, but try to be here as, as long as we can. Uh, apology accepted in advance. Honorable Mshongo. Honorable Mshongo. Honorable Zondi. Yes, sir. Good morning uh, to everyone on the platform. I move that we adopt the agenda as presented. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Zondi. Honorable Adams. Good morning to all on the platform. Thank you, Chair. I comment on the adoption of the uh, agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the agenda has been adopted and seconded by members. Can I take this opportunity to greet uh, you, Minister and Deputy Minister, again? Uh, can Minister take this opportunity to, to present your, uh, your office and say uh, what you want to say in case that uh, you can leave us before uh, the answering of the questions? I'm suspecting this uh, overview is from your office. Uh, if you want to say something, uh, we'll be happy. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Minister. Good morning, Shepherson, and thank you very much for the opportunity. Good morning to the DM and good morning to the members of the committee. The Thanks, DM. Uh, I would have wanted to say something about apology. There are a few other committees, CAP committees that in between will join. Uh, but will be in the meeting. The department is led by the acting DG, uh, Umama Ndom uh, Stella Kumalo. Uh, of course, the entity is present here today. <clears throat> I join you, Chair, in your congratulatory message about uh, how sport has been able to do what President Mandela uh, always defined about the role of sport. And I think uh, it is due to the work of this committee uh, we sincerely thank you for the support. And I think particularly Rabi has shown that it's only through sport that you can be able to achieve the nation of our dream, which is truly non-racial and democratic, where everyone were able to share the common purpose of being a South African, to see a South African flag and the national anthem being flown all over the world in, in global stage. It really means that uh, we are making progress. And I think it's only up to us, working with the committee and select committees as well, generally, to take this moment and take advantage of this moment to build social cohesion. And I think it is now possible that we can indeed achieve social cohesion. Uh, the, it always takes us with pride when we come and present before you with one of our entities because we believe in accountability. The, your remarks about some of the reports of the entity, of course, of concern to us as well. But I think it, uh, we always uh, come with pride that it, regardless of that, we do come to the committee to present and listen to the wise contribution and comments that the committee members always make 
to enhance the work of the entities as well as the work of the of, of the department. Thank you very much, Chairperson, for those words. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Honorable Minister, uh, with those wise words. Um, can I give it to the acting DG? Uh, who, uh, I'm suspecting in case that you rush to that cabinet uh, committee meeting, DM will be around, but as DM also did indicate, of maybe can uh, leave us to other engagements. Uh, when time uh, is good for you, DM, uh, you, you can indicate maybe even before uh, the responses from the, your department, we can give you that opportunity. Thank you, uh, Minister Ethan uh, Gigi. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. I would um, then go into the presentation, just showing my face briefly. Um, We've seen you take off the, because even the, the way uh, the network um, doesn't allow yes. you to take off. So yes, yes, please. Thank you. Your network is very bad. It's, uh, it's saying it's unstable. If I fail along yes. the way, I will ask the DG Mandisa to continue um, through you, Che. But okay. uh, my network is quite unstable as, as you yes. have picked up. Mm -hmm. um, we are following the same format that we would normally follow when we come with the entities, as a minister has indicated, in terms of um, the responsibilities of the oversight uh, through the oversight unit that we have um, within the department. So the format uh, of the presentation is the same one. Um, we will um, have a slide that talks to uh, the issue of the, the whistleblower and, and the status thereof, uh, Chair, um, uh, just briefly in the presentation, but uh, because the uh, entity would also um, talk to that um, later on when they present, uh, we would like to then just go into a little bit more detail when we get an opportunity with regard to uh, what further to what you see in the slide. So just going into the presentation, um, just to, to emphasize once again on what the mandate um, of the National uh, Library of South Africa is. Uh, Ludwig, if you could please move. Um, we give indication um, under the mandate slide um, uh, in terms of what are the contributions and the objectives uh, that talk to the existence of the National Lang Library of South Africa with re regard to their contribution to the socio-economic, cultural, and educational, scientific, and also the innovative development. And this they do, Chair, by collecting, recording, preserving, and making available the national documentary heritage and promoting an awareness and appreciation thereof but also by fostering information literacy and by facilitating access to the world's information uh, resources. So on the main, that is uh, how we would describe the mandate of the National Library of South Africa. We then um, show um, through a, 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 this uh, tabular format, the non-financial performance, um, that talks to uh, the level at which the entity has been able to achieve as against their set performance targets. Um, in the presentation from uh, the entity, they will then go to each of the to, to each of their programs to talk to how they got to this sixty five percent, as we reflect um, in as far as the reporting uh, period of 2022 twenty twenty two twenty three. So you would note that uh, we also, as we normally do, comparatively speaking, uh, show the performance, um, this non-financial performance over the last three audited financial year. But uh, the drop um, of six, uh, to 65% in the last financial year 
would be further explained uh, by the entity uh, chair when you allow. When we move to the financial allocation, um, we, we saw the baseline allocation again over the three audited uh, financial uh, years, uh, sorry, the two years audited, and but we are also including this financial year just to give a sense um, of the allocation to the entity uh, for the current financial year, but for the financial year that is under review um, in as far as the annual report is concerned, the allocation was 116.3 uh, uh, million for, for the, uh, in as far as the baseline allocation is concerned. Moving on to the audit outcomes over the last uh, three audited financial years, including the one under review, um, the entity has been um, getting an audit outcome that is qualified um, over the last uh, three audited financial years. Chairperson, as a department, um, um, we would also talk to what um, we deem to be the basis for the qualification, as we indicate in this slide that is uh, reflected um, on our screens. Uh, the understanding that we have as a department arising from the reports uh, from the entity are that the AG was unable to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence that the public entity had properly accounted for the heritage assets as the public entity did not maintain adequate records of all the heritage of their heritage assets. Also that the AG was unable to confirm their heritage assets by alternative means. Consequently, therefore, the AG was unable to determine whether any adjustments relating to the heritage assets stated in terms of the amounts as reflected in note 10 were necessary, amounting to 24 uh, million as indicated um, in our slides, uh, in The understanding that I, as the acting uh, DG, have um, from the information given to me by the oversight unit is that this uh, basis for qualification um, is also what led to the qualification over these three audited um, financial years as reported. The composition of the board, uh, if we move on to that, um, indicates that uh, the, in terms of racial distribution, all nine members are African. Um, but in as far as the gender uh, representation and the gender split is concerned, three out of the nine members. Um, sorry, Chair, are you losing me? No, no, no. Oh, okay. So... I'm reacting to this <laughs> slide. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, okay. I'm sorry to be loud. Okay, Chair. Uh, Chair um, there, there is three uh, females um, in the in the board of the National uh, Library of South Africa, uh, as against six uh, males um, in the board. When we look at the oversight activities, I think um, members would now be familiar with uh, this um, analysis that is normally done by the department in terms of the number of uh, council meetings held. Uh, pay, uh, year under review, number of council committee meetings, the attendance rate and the number of audit committee meetings, um, number of management meetings, as well as the number of staff meetings. Uh, all of those are indicated in the extreme left uh, column in as far as the year under review is concerned. If we move on and we look at the governance engagements, uh, similarly to our previous uh, presentations, we give um, um, an indication there in terms of the forums that exist and um, in which the entity serves. Uh, allow me to then move on, uh, Chair, having given that indication, going to the composition of the executive management. Um, what this reflects um, is that um, we had the, at the level of executive in this entity, we've got 50% um, 50, uh, 50 representation in as far as gender split is concerned, and racially two Africans, one colored, um, two, two African males, one African female, and one colored female at the level of the executive. If we then go on to the composition of staff, we take note that um, the 
staff complement is dominated uh, by females uh, at sitting at 100 as against uh, the 78 male uh, uh, within the staff uh, complement as it were. I would then just talk to the late the issue of the whistleblower uh, blower complaint as indicated in, in your agenda, uh, Chairperson. The department received an email with the whistleblowing allegations of corruption at the NLSA. I need to indicate here, even though I did not include it, Chair, that um, the email was forwarded uh, to myself as well on the 14th of August. So that's the date that I have in terms of the receipt of the email with these whistleblowing allegations. Um, subsequently, as um, we looked at uh, how we then did with this uh, particular matter, we requested uh, the, the, the entity, the National Library of South Africa, to provide the responses uh, to us as a department on these allegations. Chairperson, perhaps I need to indicate that this was part of us making sure that we give the entity the right, uh, the right to respond, uh, given the fact that these allegations, there was quite a number of these allegations. And I just want to mention, uh, just briefly, Chair, the nature of, of the allegations uh, that were contained um, in, in this email uh, correspondence. Um, they ranged from the bullying of staff, uh, and, and it was very uh, specific, saying the bullying of staff by the CEO, the dismissal of the director of the human resources, a fraud case of the former company secretary, the payment of bonus uh, for the CEO, improper acting arrangements, appointment of the organizational design service provider, and the improper utilization of funds earmarked for GRAP 103, amongst others. So I'm just uh, making um, emphasis in terms of the nature of the allegations. We therefore gave uh, the entity an opportunity, uh, a, a right to respond, to, to which they did. Um, by the 7th of September, the entity, um, after requesting an extension, gave us their response. We evaluated the response as a department, um, um, including a DD, some of the DDGs and myself, that uh, had a meeting to discuss how we deal with this particular issue. And subsequently, we then um, prepared a, a submission to the minister uh, after having done that review, as we indicate, where we made a recommendation to the minister uh, to commission an independent investigation to ascertain the veracity of these allegations. I therefore need to indicate, Chair, that the Minister approved our recommendations on the 16th of October uh, 2023. So as of now, the process that takes us uh, to this independent investigation has been taken over by our internal investigation unit to do a, pre a preliminary review of um, whether uh, this um, particular matters, of how these particular matters would then uh, be translated into the TORs for the independent investigation. Chairperson, allow me to then pause at this stage um, and um, hand uh, the meeting uh, back to yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, DG. Uh, uh, can I take it uh, to the chairperson of uh, NRSA uh, to take us through? Thank you. Good morning, chairperson, and good morning mm -hmm. to, to the minister, the deputy minister, and the members, and my colleagues. Um, I'm not sure whether you would like me to project from my side or it will be projected from your side. Just showing your face and then you, I was thinking that it's Mbali who's speaking or Mandisa. Your voices okay. are the same. So we want to see, is it not Mandisa <laughs> or some okay, let me try. Let me oh. try. Yes. I hope okay. you can see me now. No, we yes. can see you. 
we can switch it off. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'm um, waiting Mr. for the... We've given you the rights to, to project the presentation. What are you saying, Jam? I'm saying, Chair, that we've given Ms. Mabasu the right to uh, project the presentation. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I will do so. Okay, Rahil. Chairperson, please uh, confirm if you can see my presentation. Yes, yes, we do. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much once again, Chairperson, and uh, for the opportunity for uh, for presenting the report to the portfolio committee uh, we uh, we might have uh, to, or you might uh, see some kind of a repetition because we've covered some of the uh, areas that has been covered by uh, the acting ttg so well when it comes to that point i will not make uh, much emphasis mm -hmm. so uh, in terms of the outline we'll just give a high level introduction the organizational annual performance, and again, annual performance per program, target achieved per program, targets not achieved per program, annual HR information, financial information, and also we'll also deal, we'll uh, also look into uh, the, um, the whistleblowing that has been uh, uh, referred to. Through you, Chairperson, please allow me to uh, invite uh, the CEO to uh, take us through uh, the uh, performance, the per program, and also the CFO to take us through the financial report or information when I get to that uh, to that uh, uh, slide of, of, of for them to present. Thank okay. you, CEO. Okay, um, I'll just give a high level of the introduction. As uh, as an entity, we uh, we and um, we comply in terms of this of section 40 of the public finance management act as a public entity and uh, we also uh, ensure that uh, we compile an annual report and uh, submit it as required and uh, we are uh, also um, make sure that uh, we uh, highlight the progress of uh, our mandate our deliverables as required and uh, on regular basis submit to the department so um, the uh, uh, a, the APP highlights our implementation in terms of the targets that have been uh, uh, have been uh, identified. So uh, the APP is drawn from uh, our NLSA year 2020 to 2025 strategic plan, which is aligned to the government's 2019 to 2024 medium term strategic framework. And the APP also includes other strategic projects and policy priorities as identified uh, for the NLSA. The annual report was submitted, and uh, we uh, we're quite happy that uh, the uh, acting DDG made mention of that. And uh, also, while the it, we, we've got uh, the uh, audit, the, uh, the internal auditor and the auditor general have uh, audited the report. So, with regards to the progress, we have uh, made some progress in terms of our implementation, and we will take you through those uh, uh, areas of performance. We we have uh, the uh, three programs that we report to. The first program being the uh, administration, which is basically have about 10 key performance indicators, which provide strategic support to core programs. We then have uh, program two, which is business development and uh, basically looks at uh, the, co the collection, preservation and protection of South African documentary heritage and render national bibliography services. It has about nine key indicators, performance indicators. Program three, which is public uh, engagement, has seven key performance indicators, mainly providing universal access to information and promotion of cultural of of culture of our reading, writing, and publishing. In terms of our, our overview, in terms of our performance. Uh, we, as mentioned, we had a qualified uh, uh, audit outcome, and uh, as the NLSA, we do have a plan 
which uh, at the, uh, uh, when the CFO comes uh, to uh, to present, will provide that uh, plan in terms of addressing this uh, 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 situation that we are faced with in terms of qualified uh, opinion that we've received for the for the past few years, and uh, also in terms of our uh, highlighting that. Uh, it has been a constant. We, I mean, it, we've been in a situation whereby we have been uh, grab, uh, uh, battling with addressing our heritage asset uh, uh, registry, and uh, there has been plans, and some of those plans have been successful. But we continue to ensure that those plans continues and, and, and enhancing the plans in addressing the uh, heritage registry that we are um, ensuring that uh, it is a. Uh, it is available and uh, we are able to uh, uh, respond positively as required. I'm going to hand over to the CEO to uh, take us to the next uh, 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 to the next uh, slides. Thank you, CEO. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chairperson, and 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 good day. Uh, committee members and are you uh, referring members also <laughs> not uh, i'm using i'm using her laptop i'm i'm struggling with my my laptop here who's uh, speaking connected. it's uh, the ceo mr kp madumo thank you and thank the you we've seen you switch off <laughs> thank you okay <laughs> go on ceo Thank you, Chair. Uh, once more, greetings to yourselves and, and the Honorable Minister and the Deputy Minister and uh, Honorable MPs and uh, Acting DG and DDGs present. Uh, I would zoom into unpacking each program as uh, some of the information has been alluded to. As the Chair has indicated, the NLSA has got three programs. Uh, program one, which is administration, in terms of the 2022-2023 annual performance uh, per program, we had 10 targets, and out of the 10 targets, we only achieved three, and uh, seven were not achieved. And the reasons for, for not achieving the, the seven is that one of the indicator we were, we set ourselves an ambitious target uh, to augment the the past, since we know that the budget that we are getting uh, from uh, the allocation is not sufficient. So we were not successful in uh, generating revenue from the fundraising initiatives that uh, we, we planned and considering the current financial uh, situation uh, globally. And the second indicator was, uh, which was impacted, uh, our review of the SCM policy uh, took longer than expected. Uh, we didn't have the CFO, and by the time we appointed the CFO, uh, he was able to assist us uh, to bring the finalization of the uh, SCM policy. And the uh, uh, SCM manager also left us in the process of us uh, reviewing the SCM policy. And also uh, one of the issue which I think we will unpack it, the issue of the grab uh, 103. And I must indicate here, Chair, I think uh, since the standard has been implemented, I think the board, when they crafted this five-year plan, uh, they, I think the target was that at least by year five, we should have completed the issue of uh, the asset register. And I think this is because primarily the complicity of the nature of the collection uh, that the NLSA house is not a, I mean, we are talking about a 200 years old collection that we, we need to uh, to ensure that it complies to to grab standard and one of the benchmarking we have made i think in africa we are the only uh, national library that is gearing towards uh, compliance we reached out to our colleagues in the north in in america uh, the library of congress they told us that 
when uh, the accounting body wanted to introduce the standard, they uh, requested for an exemption because there was no way that they were able to comply uh, with the requirement of the GREP standard in the nature of the work that we are doing. Also, our colleagues in Canada, also they indicated, I mean, they are having almost more than 10 times the size of our collection. The only country that is able to uh, comply is Australia, uh, which I think we have reached to them uh, also. Uh, Chair, that's the one that they told us, and we are learning some lessons uh, from them in us finalizing this. But we'll, uh, the, when the CFO and the, my colleague ED come, they will tell you how we, we have uh, managed to uh, at least address uh, the path towards addressing the GREP 103. And on program, uh, okay, another challenge that we experienced under program one was the issue of the, the maintenance project uh, in our Cape Town campus. I think members, when we presented the annual performance plan last year, uh, they were concerned about the roof leaks in Cape Town. Uh, campus and I think that was another project that uh, took some time because we are we had to get heritage approval and there were some delays in uh, and, and and challenges in in in, in getting the the heritage ap uh, approval uh, but I think now we are we are on track we finally got the the heritage approval and under program two uh, we had uh, nine indicators. Uh, we achieve eight uh, out of uh, out of the the nine, and uh, I think that the reason for not achieving that indicator is that uh, the the type of it's a, it's around uh, collection care and preservation. The type of specialized material that we procure uh, is not readily available in South Africa. We had to source it overseas and uh, it, those were some of the delays that resulted us not able to 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 reach our target under under business development and under program three which is public engagement uh, we had seven indicators and we achieved all the seven uh, indicators and uh, i think chair if you look uh, from our performance from the core business side uh, we we have done well. We have achieved our target. Uh, I think the only challenge where we we are struggling it's around the issues uh, under program under program one, which basically needs to ensure that uh, the core is able to perform its work in a, in a in a in an environment that that is that is conducive. Uh, I think. Uh, Chair, I uh, I would yeah I, I would I would not go into I'll just give the highlights yes. on 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 our on our achievements uh, under under uh, uh, the two core programs uh, the NLSA uh, managed to conduct several workshops uh, mainly to. Uh, targeting emerging publishers and, and self-publishers to educate them about our, our legal deposit. Uh, as you know, that one of our mandate is to preserve everything that is published in this country. And uh, we want to make sure that uh, publishers are aware of their responsibilities and the obligations so that we can preserve uh, this literary heritage for the a future and unborn uh, generation. I think this is uh, in in response to 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 our mandate, and we run these workshops countrywide, uh, working with uh, colleagues from from the provincial library uh, services, and we we were also able to to acquire uh, the microfilm scanner, which helped us to digitize over. 56,000 uh, uh, images, uh, making sure that the NLSA collection uh, that is housed in the two campuses can be accessible virtually 
uh, which does not require people to come uh, to our building. And this material are available through our website and it also good sources of uh, research and education uh, for, for, for our, our users. And also, uh, we were able to, uh, to publish uh, some of our research papers in, 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 in a number of uh, accredited journals uh, where we, uh, we are sharing uh, the practice uh, with uh, the sector and we also uh, contributing to, to the library and, and information field uh, education. And also we, we continue to provide uh, leadership and, 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 and capacity building uh, within the sector. We run workshops and, uh, and we collaborate with academics and also uh, we were successful in also uh, raising awareness around emergency uh, preparedness around disaster management and training on, 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 on libraries and also assisting in, 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 in the sector, in the archives. We know that uh, when the University of Cape Town library ban, uh, yeah, the, 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 there were valuable collections that were, were lost. And the purpose of our training is to prepare uh, colleagues from uh, libraries, from uh, our heritage institutions to be prepared so that they can be able to mitigate and know how to act when uh, our heritage institutions are, are being uh, faced with uh, this uh, with disaster and on program three uh, public engagement some of the highlights uh, we always participate in uh, the national commemoration days where we are promoting our documentary uh, heritage uh, and and we ensure that at least we take the national library uh, to to the people and we hosted successfully a, the, our second biennial uh, national reading summit, uh, working together with our uh, UNISA, and we know that uh, we're trying to bring everybody who is involved within the reading ecosystem. Since we know that the the pulse results uh, showed us that almost over eighty percent of our uh, kids from grade one to four cannot read for meaning and uh, hence the purpose of this uh, reading summit is to uh, put our heads together so that we can uh, assist the country to read to reach the the level that we require for our kids to read uh, uh, for meaning and and also our NLSA staff continue to uh, present papers uh at, at at various uh conferences to share our our expertise and also nlsa we continue to uh, conduct book club support uh, workshops which we do to all the nine provinces and and and, and this uh workshop culminate to uh the quality participation of uh a youth to the national Fundam Zanzi reading championship that we annually host in George uh, in partnership with uh, colleagues from the Department of Correctional Service and and it's a it's a it's a way of uh, inculcating the culture of reading uh, within within our, our community and uh, the issue around uh, the library patron uh, continuing to access uh, our services uh, using uh, uh, the traditional format and more patrons are accessing our uh, electronic resources uh, through the NLSA uh, website and which also uh, resulted in us being able to exceed our target. And uh, I think, Chair, uh, 
yeah, I think I would I would, I would pause here and 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 allow. Uh, I think this information the DG uh, spoke about it. Uh, I think in 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 the number of approved posts uh, also include the one that the DG include some of the, the the contract workers that that we had. And 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 I will not talk on this one, chair. Uh, and yeah, uh, in terms of the the employment equity, the Department of Labor approved our employment equity uh, last year, and uh, we we are committed to to address uh, and uh, the issues of uh, employment equity within within the workplace and also uh, ensuring that we continue to develop uh staff to uh, to be ready for for the challenges that faces the the fifth uh, industrial revolution since we know now that uh, our sector and environment uh, is really impacted by new technology trends and one of the some of our staff members also completed uh, the postgraduate diploma uh, in library and information science through the bursaries uh, that we offer uh, to staff. Uh, Chair, I will pause here and give over to the chairperson to direct the next move. Thank you. Thank you very much, CEO. As we proceed, I'll hand over to uh, the CFO through you, Chair, and I'm going to allow the CFO to project from his site. Over to you, CFO. Uh, good morning, uh, Chairperson and uh, Honorable Members, uh, Musa and uh, fellow colleagues. Can you show your face, Godfrey? Okay. I'm having technicalities with my uh, video. I'll move to go on. I'll move to the chairperson's uh, laptop. We should go on once you are trying your face. Talk to us. Unmute. Chairperson, can you assist? Uh, he must go on whilst he's having a problem with the camera. Okay, I think I'm not visible. I'll then stop the, the video yes, and yes. do the presentation. <laughs> yes. Okay, yes. Uh, we are yes. reflecting on the performance uh, relating to our uh our financial information starting with the revenue. When you look at the revenue, 82% uh, of our revenue is uh, derived mainly from our government grants. Then we have 15%, which is mainly our non-cash revenue. Then the 3% is the revenue that we have generated uh, internally. Then looking at the performance, when we then now compare it to the 2021-22, uh, uh, financial performance. Uh, you'll note that from our own revenue generation, we have uh, uh, significantly uh, increased our revenue by 2.2 uh, million, which it which translates to 93% uh, increase, of which the biggest uh, uh, revenue generation there uh, is uh, mainly the uh, the interest that we have uh, uh, generated from the available funds, then we have received some uh, dividends from uh, from Sabinet. Then moving to uh, government grants, uh, you will note that from the government grant and subsidy, which is the annual appropriation, uh, we had a decrease of 3% uh, when we compare it to 21-22 financial period. However, in terms of the, the spending on the conditional grant, we have improved uh, on our spending for the period 22-23. Then just to highlight on the non-cash revenue, uh, our non-cash revenue is mainly made of the uh, service in kind, which is the 
uh, the revenue from uh, the use of the state properties and uh, we have uh, the gains from legal deposit which is mainly the the value of the collections that is being uh, deposited through the, the legal deposit act then we have the actuarial gains which is basically the evaluation of our post employment uh, benefits then moving to the next slide, which then touch on the expenditure. Uh, looking at our expenditure, uh, 43% of it is uh, mainly made of the employee-related cost. Then the next uh, biggest uh, cost element is our lease from rentals on operating lease. Then from there, we then have the uh, 16%, which is made up of the uh, various general uh, expenditure. Then just to uh, zoom on the expenditure element you note that the lease rentals basically it's it's high and as the nlsa we have started uh, engaging with the department as well as the department of uh, uh, public works to look at the long term strategy to try to relate to, to reduce the cost related to uh, lease rental uh, which mainly uh, relates to the storage facility in our uh, uh, Cape Town uh, uh, campus. Then also on the employee cost, you'll note that it has reduced, uh, which is mainly due to uh, some of the unfilled uh, vacancies and also the end of the uh, presidential, uh, presidential uh, employment uh, stimulus package where we had uh, previously uh, appointed various uh, intents on the project. So that reduced our employee uh, cost. Then looking at uh, uh, various improvements relating to the whole um, financial uh, uh, information environment uh, on the uh, supply chain management environment, we uh, indicating that there was no material findings uh, reported by the AG in the period that passed of 22-23. Uh, that is mainly based uh, due to the, the developed uh, ACM policies and the uh, standard operating uh, procedures and the checklist that we have now uh, been implementing. Then also we highlighting that we didn't incur uh, irregular and fruitless and expenditure uh, for, for, for the previous period. And then what we just need to do to deal with uh, going forward is just to speed up the process, speed up the process of uh, condemnation and right of process for our old irregular expenditure and the fruitless and wasteful uh, expenditure. Then the key challenges that we uh, want to bring to the attention uh, is uh, on our receivables that we've reported, uh, we have uh, almost six million that relates to the conditional grants. Basically, that one, main, that one is mainly due to the late transfer of the conditional grants uh, to the NLSA. So, with that, to deal with the intervention on it, we are uh, improving on the uh, conditional grant management processes uh, through the regular interaction with the uh, department's uh, CFO's office. Then we currently having a, a liabilities of uh, over 10 million, of which the 10 million of it is mainly from the long outstanding municipal debt uh, that was caused by the uh, budget under allocation when the budget was devolved to the NLSA. So with this one, we'll continue to work with the department to identify additional funding sources for the to uh, uh, to pay this uh, long outstanding uh, debt. However, in addition to that, we are also doing an, a, an a review of this account so that we make sure that we pay uh, the proper uh, amount to, to the public works. Then the next one is the um, uh, of the relates to the majority of the unspent conditional grants, uh, which is mainly due to the capital maintenance grant. Uh, this one couldn't spend on it mainly because of the uh, pro uh, the approvals that we are waiting from the Western Cape uh, Heritage Council Authority uh, for to approve our uh, specification so that we can uh, start implementing this uh, uh, project. So uh, in terms of dealing with this, we are having a continuous engagement with the Heritage uh, Authority to monitor the application processes. Then we also highlighting the issues of the shortfall on funding allocation for CAP 103 project, uh, which basically uh, result in the delay in completion of the project. For this one, we already received uh, the approval of the cash surpluses for 22-23 to cover the shortfall on this uh, uh, funding uh, uh, that we have.
Yeah, I think I'm done with the presentation for our slide. Thank you very much, CFO. I'll take the next slide with regards to the allegations. Um, just uh, adding to uh, what the ACTDG mentioned earlier on, yes, we have received correspondence from uh, the uh, department with regards to a, uh, a list of allegations which uh, have uh, included uh, victimization, governance issues, and the list that uh, the, DDG, the acting DDG mentioned earlier on. In our view, we looked at that and we uh, responded. Um, and some of this, I have to mention, Chairperson, were not new allegations. They've been coming uh, uh, even before our time as the board. Uh, we've, uh, we've responded to them before. And we, re we, we, we made a reference to those responses in our response, which we've sent on the 11th of September. And uh, we, uh, in our discussion amongst ourselves, we got to an, an understanding that um, uh, we, we've, we, we need to get to the depth of this situation because uh, it, uh, based on our responses, it, it uh, goes without saying that we're not satisfying the, uh, the whistleblowers because it, it's not the first time they are raising the same issue and the more we respond, the more they come with the same issue. And we welcome with very much uh, uh, our open hands, uh, we, we, we welcome the, uh, um, the investigation that the department will be instituting. We are looking forward and we are committing uh, ourselves as the board and also as the executives, the management to uh, cooperate and support the process, which we believe that this process will uh, uh, lead to a point whereby we uh, we close these matters and uh, they will be investigated independently to uh, to satisfy everyone who is uh, raising as uh, these concerns to us. So um, I will leave it to that point, uh, 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 Chairperson, to, and uh, to thank you for the opportunity and to uh, also thank everyone to uh, have given us this opportunity, thanking the management, the board members who are here as we are presenting to uh, to 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 the portfolio committee. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, uh, and thank to your colleagues with the uh, informat uh, information. Now I'm giving the the a chance to the Honorable Members to raise the questions. Honorable Zondi, Honorable Mamabulo, Honorable Adams, Honorable Nteto, Honorable Malomane. Thank you, Honorable Members, on that order. Honorable Zondi. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Chairperson, uh, we would like to Greet the minister, the ministry, and the department and members. From the platform. few questions, uh, 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 chair. Um, we were welcome uh, by the the overview by the department and also the report by the the, the presentation by the by the entity. Uh, chair, the first one. Uh, is is with the issue of the 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 gender which the 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 the, 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 the board. Uh, I think some of the members uh, 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 highlighted uh, that in the in in in, in other boards uh, the the gender parity. Um, I don't know, Chair, who appoints the board? Because we normally say, we normally pose the question on the gender parity to the board uh, uh, than to the minister who appoints the board. Uh, but uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm subject to collect to connection. If the board does not appoint itself, why do we how do we balance the agenda if we, we don't appoint it? If they come to the board as an individual and, 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 and collective. 
But I want uh, the question, the first question to the department. Uh, what are your plans, uh, 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 Honorable Minister and the department, uh, to assist uh, the board uh, uh, in the next uh, 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 term to balance? The, how how are you assisting them to capacitate the one that are in the in the in the in the in the in the in 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 the in the, in the, in the entity uh, to capacitate them more so that it will be easy for them uh, to 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 occupy a, a, a senior position within the administrative administrative administration or even a B board members because there are many there are the 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 the, the there are many women uh, in the staff than 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 men in terms of uh, gender. Sorry, I think that one chair uh, will assist. But also, chair, uh, on the matter of uh, uh, on page fifty six of the entity report, it is reported that there were delays. In signing a recognition agreement with the organized labor. I praise the committee about the labor issues in the entity. One, uh, the, 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 the second one, name the, the unions that are recognizing the entity and what are the relations between the unions and the management. The other matter, what caused the delays in the recognition uh, of the union? What impact did the delay in recognizing the union have on the entity? And uh, the last one, what was the union's role in addressing allegations of corruption? Governance issues and victimization of people forward. Uh, that is with regard to the union chair. And the last one, chair, is uh, with the recommendation. The Mashobane uh, talk about the recommendation that was uh, uh, recommended to the minister. Uh, I just want to know uh, does the recommendation include? action plan to address the issues raised by the auditor general that resulted in the qualification uh, because they were consistent uh, for the last three years uh, the same issues uh, are raised and the, uh, uh, the entity is confirming that and what is, I, 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 want, I just want to know on the recommendation to rectify the situation because we can't have an entity that is getting qualified with the same issues, uh, obviously assisted by the by the by the 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 department. That is what I want uh, the department to know. But also the recommendation you will share for the department to ensure effective implementation of the action plan. For the research acts, asset and um, matters, the department should actively oversee and monitor the progress made by accounting authorities. This will assist in identifying areas that need improvement and provide timely intervention to address to address any challenges encountered before. Uh, finally, I want to, to thank the, the department for the timeline. The 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 AG uh, the the DG in his in her acting capacity chair uh, was explicit on the on the on the timelines. The whistleblower wrote us on the on this date, and we 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 dealt with the matter, and we responded on this date, and we are waiting for the minister to respond. And it it is not a long time. August and, and October, and it's it, she was explicit on that, and we would like to comment on that because 
sometimes these uh, these uh, investigations take long, uh, uh, not months, even years, uh, uh, to be dealt with. Oh, I'm going to say, I'm going to look more up. Ms. Bong, Honorable Mama Bulo, the next Honorable Member. Jawala wao amudula studio arena wakomiti maybe tu jilani. Kudu medisha tu na yadi papa di wakavole se chota je. Good enough zizu kwa producta ins youth league amo le mta juu agarelo me no tawe maaf. Chair, I want to start by acknowledging or appreciating the effort that the minister and the deputy minister and the department to in supporting our spring box and the proteas. Uh, I've never seen such an active ministry uh, um, since our time. I mean, we had a minister before. I don't, uh, I don't want to say he was not active, but, no, but I'm saying Zizi and uh, Omenata must be acknowledged for the great work that they are doing. Uh, they've brought, yeah, they brought this thing of sports back um, into our country. They remind me of the threat and on the ball for. So Zizi, Zizi and Omenata, um, not that we please continue to support um, um, our national teams, being the Springboks, the Proteas, Bafana, Bafana, Banyana, Banyana, and all of them, so that we bring back this thing of sports. Remember, sports can unite uh, the country. Never mind this one, this other stupid ones who are criticizing the Springbok logo and other ones. So, Chair, my question will, will be one, will be around, um, I know that normally they're having a liberal week, so I want to check. Besides library week, what else do they have in promoting uh, issues of reading in the country and so on? And also the archives, for example, now if I want to access uh, an old book, which I read some 1999 or 1998 at high school, where can I access such books? Because sometimes you go to the school, they say, no, we have outfaced them, that um, kind of textbook or so on. So where can we find them so that we continue to be a reading nation? Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Mama Bull, Honorable Adams. Thank you very much, Chairperson. And good morning to all on the platform, our visitors, the minister, deputy minister, the department, and uh, our colleagues, and also the SEC uh, staff. Chairperson, I've got a few uh, clarity seeking questions. Uh, my first question will be on slide 20 of the presentation. And I also wanted to join by thanking all of uh, those who are giving us presentations this morning. 20, uh, slide 20 of the presentations argues, Chair, that the entity responded to allegations of corruption, victimization, of whistleblowers and governance issues with um, within a uh, uh, national library of South Africa. Now, if the um, if they can outline to the committee the governance issues that were addressed, also out outline how the entity has addressed the allegations of corruptions and victimizations of whist whistleblowers. And then uh, are there disciplinary actions taken related to the allegations of corruptions and victimization of whistleblowers? And the other question, what effect did these allegations have on the organization as a whole? How does the entity intend to mitigate the impact of the consequences that the organization might have experienced. And then um, on program one, program one exceeded a budget by uh, 29 billion. Program two, on the other hand, exceeded by 11.34 billion. Is over expenditure not a contravention of the PFMA? And then uh, program three, chairperson, underspend by 3.52 billion. 
my question now is what impact does under expenditure have uh, on service delivery and then to national library server um, of south africa yes it is important to take decisive action to ensure compliance with uh, uh, supply chain management regulations and prevent irregular expenditure what robust measures can be implemented to hold officials accountable and enforce strict consequences for non-compliance. I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Adams. Honorable Mteto. Thank you, Chair. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Minister and Deputy Minister. Uh, and uh, to all my portfolio committee members and, and our visitors today, um, Chair, per switch of my. Okay. Switch your video, but not your mic. Open your mic. Sorry, sorry, Chair, <laughs> uh, Maybe let me firstly say thank you, Minister and Deputy Minister, for inviting the committee members into to your events of national importance. Mm. But I want to write my discontentment with the manner we often get received and treated in these events. I'm sure Chairperson will attest to that. No, no, no member I'm sure will attest. We often get there with no information whatsoever of what is happening, how it is happening, and uh, what role do we play? What status do we hold? We, 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 so I'm just highlighting that so that you can look at it, but don't stop inviting us. We'll come even if we have to pay for our own uh, mm -hmm. traveling arrangements. Thanks, Chair. And then on the questions, the budget for National Library, for me, it is very worrisome, considering the role that libraries must play even in the education system generally. Uh, I think the department needs to consciously and morally relook at its priorities because I often see a twisted, twisted priorities, twisted priorities in terms of what do you fund sufficiently. And I'm thinking the the libraries should be our national library should be building libraries in previously disadvantaged where they never had libraries. They should. But the budget doesn't seem to speak to that. Maybe the reason they're not doing that, but mostly it is workshops, trainings, and this things. And these are the grounds where normally this mismanagement of funds and corruption allegations come up, you know. So I want to find out from national libraries, having said that, I don't know how they even manage with them such a budget, a budget they manage to have mismanagement of funds and, and irregular expenditures. What are the examples of business development procurement items? The second question is that I hear more about workshops training and, and, and I want to find out what, what do you, why do you concentrate much on training people to understand the, the space of the library when they don't have even libraries? I don't hear much of the procurement of books from uh, emerging authors who needs to be given that space. Most of them, they are posting their books on social media, which is a shame for us because we're supposed to assist young people who are writing and encourage young people to write their own history. Otherwise, our history will resemble that of lions. Um, the other question is that there's a great lack of radicalism towards changing the status quo, introducing the new emerging uh, authors, uh, building of, of uh, um, libraries in preschools, in, I mean, uh, the, the delivery of books instead, in preschools where early education starts in primary schools, in high schools. All I hear you are talking about is University of Cape Town, UNISA. You're not talking 
uh, about the high school in Shushuwe. You're not talking that. So I don't know whether it is not part of your responsibility. Um, I want to know why aren't you doing that? Is there anything that prevents you from doing that? And then the third question is that we know many people have no capital to have their books authored under their ownership, full ownership. That's many they lose ownership to publishers and those who come in as funders. And this is a challenge for many of people with, 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 with the talent, with the knowledge, with the information to write their own books. What program do you have to assist such? I'm one of those that have faced a situation with documenting the Guaido history till today. But I haven't heard you saying that we assist young people by doing ABC. And then in the presentation, I hear you mentioning UNISA and Cape Town. Do you have any uh, collaborative programs with these universities where you encourage universities to incubate the communities around those who want to learn about, instead of you running workshops and workshops and workshops, because really workshops, we run workshops of the workshops we ran last year and the workshop we are still going to run next year. I, I know that that has been a feature in government. I want us to try and deviate from that and do what we call practical, things that will have practical impact on what we are dealing with as a nation coming from that tragedy that we know. And having so many people who are poor, disadvantaged, who, who need to really check up into getting to, to learn and educate themselves. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mteta. Honorable Malomani. Thank you, Chair. Greetings to yourself, the Minister, Deputy Minister, Honorable Members, our staff, the departmental staff, and our guest. Chair, let me also join in welcoming the presentations, uh, the presentation and the overview from the department. Chair, my question, it will be based on the audit report. Chair, I'm very, very, very concerned because the entity received a qualified audit in financial year 2021, also in this financial 2021-22, and also in this financial year of 2022-23 is still the same. I just wanted to check with the department and the NLSA what consequence management process were implemented for the failure to improve on the audit outcomes? And also, what are the challenges with GREP 103? And how does the entity hope to overcome those challenges? Also, did the entity commit to AG that the audit outcome will improve in, this, in the financial year of 2023-24? I'm also concerned, Chair, because Program 1, one of their commitment, it was the 100% audit improvement plan. But also, you can see that they've never achieved that one. I just want to check whether on the targets, because on the 26 targets that they've planned, they've achieved only 18 and the eight that are not achieved, what is their plan so that they, did they roll over those plans? What have they made so that those plans, they must be achieved? So the other matter that I want to ask, Che, I want to have a write on what Mr. Zondi has questions about the issue of the relations. I just want them to take us through what are the relations between the unions and the management and what caused the delay in recognizing the union. And also what was the union's role in addressing allegations of corruption, governance and issues and victimization of the whistleblowers. 
The last question, Chair, that I want to speak about is under the... the I want to add also on the underachievement. I just want to check on the on their presentation of where the program of, according to their report, the achievement under, uh, and also on, on program one, because I'm concerned on, on program one, because it also got the risk management. Also in that one, they've never achieved. And also under those that they didn't achieve on risk, because also there, is a, there are threats that they were having which is also the underachieve or the implementation of the grab. I just want to check on them because there are three consecutive years they've got qualified. What is their way of making sure that they are promising us that in the next financial year, the audit outcome, it won't be similar to the three years that has been there. Thank you, Chair. Chairperson. Honorable Joseph. Thank you, um, Chairperson. Greetings to the ministry and all the colleagues in the administration and the entity. Uh, Chairperson, I'm covered by most of the questions. I just wanted to support the question on the um, audit outcome and also want to support the question on, 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 on how we're going to to deal with this, the entity going to deal with this going forward. So my question is, well, the, is it the intention of the entity to, to do the turnaround of the audit outcome in this financial year, or do they have a longer term plan? How big is that problem with GRAP 103 and all the insufficient evidence and adjustments that were not clear as indicated by the by the AG? Um, then I also want to support the questions on, on the on the council or the board members, or maybe the council for the library information services, just the process on elections and and, and how long this um, council needs to be in place or for before the election. Uh, Chairperson on the vacancies, I just want to ask how long this that position is vacant or slide eleven, it was said. Will it be filled because due to austerity measures? Is that part of the cutback and? What pro if it's going to be filled, what process is underway to fill it? On the whistleblower and the report given uh, by the department, I, I want just to say I'm still concerned that we have these, these allegations, but I want to appreciate the openness and the transparency, uh, the way the department have presented that uh, allegations and, and their work that they've done including the recommendation to the minister. I, I just want to, to comment on that. Um, uh, yeah, so I also note that uh, program one, the, the underachievement, uh, you know, only 30%. Um, so I want to share in that question. In the project in Cape Town, Browns, uh, Chairperson, I am um, I, uh, not sure what the, all the projects is referred to, but I wrote a question to the minister September 23 about the leaking roof, which they have last week uh, responded back to me on that question, that there was a, a leaking roof situation between the 11th of May and the 26th of June. And it only took six months to fix it, which is, sounds very good. But three years ago when I visited the library, the top shelf, there was a problem with the roof and the top shelves were empty. And I think the committee maybe have visited that um, the Cape Town branch before my arrival to this committee. And I don't know if that problem was still there on the leaking roof. So my question now is that the, the answer I got back now last week about this leaking roof that I was identified in May this year, 2023, my question now is that the response I got back refers to a 249,665.46 cents of fixing a uh, fixing a leaking roof identified this year. Now I want to ask if the same roof was now fixed again. There's two hundred forty nine thousand, or is it another leak somewhere else that we're not we're not, not aware of? 
I know the comments, the highlights, it was uh, it's good to hear. There's also highlights with National Library South Africa, which was raised. And then my last two points question, the 10 million outstanding debt, municipal debt, um, I would like to know how long is that going on for and what type of services of accounts linked to the municipality that debt speaks to. And then a general question, <clears throat> that's not necessarily part of the presentation, I want to ask what is the link of National Library South Africa to the education department? In other words, the impact what we're doing in this entity to the curriculum and also vice versa, what impact does the department of education has to to um, to National Library South Africa? And I particularly want to ask you about the Khoisan because I'm asking the people to go to the libraries to go see what is the information, the history there, and go check the books at the schools. What are they teaching the learners about our history and how updated our libraries are versus the what the education department should support and, and do? So just a general question on that, but thank you very much for the opportunity, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Dennis. Honorable Sylvia. <coughs> Uh, thanks, Chairperson. Greetings to everyone. Thanks for your presentation. Uh, um, the previous speakers partly covered me on some issues. Uh, um, uh, for instance, the um, underachieved uh, by 70%. But I didn't hear, well, are there any strategies to overcome those underachieved uh, or those challenges which were raised. And the other one is, uh, according to the... According to the report, uh, three of the activities under Program 1, uh, the previous speakers has, in, uh, has been uh, indicated on that. It, it has been the targets were not uh, um, uh, uh, were not achieved, but it can't be achieved if they were not implemented. But if they are saying due uh, were not implemented due to the non-responsiveness of the service providers, uh, I'm not sure what does it mean. The did they, do they undermine the other colleagues or I, I, I'm not sure what what is the the reason for not implementing the 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 the, the, the program uh, was it the first time the entity requested external stakeholders services for these services if yes what was the response if they didn't respond Oh, what were the, 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 the good reasons for not responding? If they can elaborate more on that. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Members. Honorable Members, um, I am suspecting we can uh, okay. repeat. Hello? Chairperson, my hand is still up. I didn't see your hand. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I'm sorry if I didn't recognize your hand, uh, Honorable Fundy. Thank you, thank you, Chairperson. Greetings to all, and also thank you to our guests for the presentation. Uh, my questions are as follow. Um, on page 64 of the annual report, uh, there's an invoice of more than 10 million for the National Library of South Africa's water and electricity account that has been outstanding for over three years. And uh, the National Library has requested funding from the department. And a portion of the debt has been funded in the 2022 and three financial year by the department, which uh, will be paid once the verification process of the debt by internal audit has been finalized. And uh, apparently this verification of the invoice was expected to be finalized by August 2023. What was the value of the department's funding to settle this debt over, uh, of over 10 million? and by when will the balance be paid? Then my second um, question is, the CEO skipped over the steady increase in the expenditure on contracts, consultants, and professional fees. In 2016-17, this amount in, amounted to just under 700,000. In 2021 to 2022, 
It was 8.4 million. And in 2022-2023, the annual report, it says it was 12.4 million. So it's more than 11 million um, in five years increase. Can you please give more de details on why there's such an increase and why is there such a demand for consultants? Also, who were the service providers? Have the National Library used the same consultants as previously? And if, who are they and um, what have they been consulting on? My last question is to the department, both the Ezeka Museums and the National um, Library of South Africa receive qualifications on heritage assets. Um, can the department say what the plan is going, going forward is for these two entities um, that uh, both have vast collections that need to be accounted for in terms of the GRAB 103? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, Van Dijk. I'm sorry, always switch off as the noise outside cutting off grass. Uh, thank you so much uh, to the ministry, uh, ministry uh, including the department uh, uh, of the information. And thank you to the National Library of South Africa um, I cannot repeat what honorable members are asking. The only thing that I, I wanted that you, you must give what you are telling us that after the AG and even the department looking at these three years uh, getting a qualification, a qualified uh, uh, report, you said you've got a plan but I, I, I'm not sure whether this plan uh, you are going to implement whilst you are saying according to the grab, uh, you, you have uh, targets which we didn't um, uh, achieve, but also you, the reasons are, are the uh, less budget. I'm, 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 I'm looking at uh, to the department. Do you think that are they going to achieve uh, uh, that plan? And as a department, that the majority of departments, even this one, have a, a cut off budget. So uh, I'm, I'm wondering if the reasons not to achieve not to adhere to, to grab 103 is because of lesser budget, uh, which means the status quo will remain. I want uh, yourself and the budget to clarify me. What does that mean? Uh, can they say something out of your responses? Because uh, you were having about um, a five-year uh, targets of your project, you, you were not adhered to, to grab, but your reasons are worrisome to me that uh, as you are here, I'm not even sure whether when we are debating, we'll ask uh, that all oh, treasurer must uh, add more budget to, to, to the department, whilst uh, as all sitting here we have uh, even during the treasurer's uh, um, treasurer's uh, statement last week, that uh, in in most departments the cutting of, of budget and whatever, and we usually when uh, we are presenting uh, the report of our department to ask uh, more funds and more funding because I'm suspecting you are not the only entity that you are complaining about funds. Uh, I want the department and your good self to put us uh, to, to a light that uh, their plans are depending on the budget and this uh, abnormality of uh, your career is not doing well, uh, how are you going to overcome? But so far, I thank you so much, members. And uh, if uh, you don't mind, let me check 
whether the minister or the DM are still here uh, in order that if they are still here, would DM still here? Uh, he wanted to be released as half past 10. He's going for 11 o'clock. Uh, DM, can I start with you before you leave us? Uh, no, no, the minister is, is gone. I'm still here for the next hour. Okay, thank you so yeah. much. Uh, um, can I give it to uh, to the person, Rahul Nabaso? And you can uh, chair uh, according to the questions to your colleagues. I thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson. And thank you to uh, the honorable members for the questions. A very long list, exhausting, exhausted all the areas, and we really appreciate that. Um, this is the order through you, Chair, if you allow me to, uh, so that we uh, we move in a, a very smooth and seamless way. Yes. We're going to cluster the questions, and we are going to ask uh, the uh, the executive to assist in answering the questions as clustered. We've clustered them in four areas. We've got uh, the uh, questions, all the questions around GREP 103. We've got questions around the uh, our corporate services in terms of our facilities, HR related questions. We've sort of clustered that. We've got our acting executive uh, director who's going to respond to those questions. All questions related to finance and audit, they are all clustered and they are also going to be answered by the CFO. And questions related to programs and uh, and, 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 and the activities uh, that uh, the NLSA is, res is responsible for, the CEO will take care of them. And then I will then close with the uh, governance related questions. So I'm going to hand over to the ED core program, Nogutula, to uh, through your chair to, to respond to those questions. Uh, good, good morning, honorable members, uh, the minister and the deputy minister, acting DG and uh, colleagues. Um, Chairperson and uh, the honorable members, um, I'm going to just give an overview in terms of what we have done to try and respond and deal with this audit qualification. Uh, okay, I must also mention my name. I'm Noctula Musa, the executive director for core programs, and I'll switch off my camera. Yes, you can. Okay. Yes, we, okay. The National Library has got 3.2 million uh, items in our collection. As the CEO has indicated uh, in his uh, presentation, they are very diverse. Some are in foreign languages. They are, are over 200 years old. And they are unique manuscripts, maps, and uh, books, uh, which are of rare nature, which are not easy to, to, to find. And also, some of them are in fragile state which um, requires special care to, to handle and, and work on and to describe. So as a result, our grab project is uh, it's a very long project. Uh, it, it's been a long, long journey for us. We have made some progress, but uh, it is a very complex project because of all these dynamics that are unique to the National Library that are not uh, obviously like the normal books that you'll find in the public library, Jefferson. So we have done um, a number of activities. The phase one of the project, which is mainly um, sorting, organizing, filing, shelving, and securing the collection is at 82%. It's almost complete. So we are now uh, left with the most important task of uh, generating a complete register. Uh, that is what the Auditor General is expecting. They're expecting a complete register that they can be able to audit and, and, and verify. So that is what we are working on, uh, Chaperson. But um, we are, um, the, due to the nature, as I've in, outlined, of the collection, uh, the, especially the rare part collection and special collection, which is about 350,000. It requires a special evaluator to actually a heritage specialist who can assess and determine the heritage value uh, of these collections. And uh, in South Africa, we have tried to uh, uh, get more people, get more resources 
on board, but it has been very extremely challenging to to get the additional resources because this is a very scarce skill here in South Africa. We don't have a, a sufficient evaluators to do this task. We currently rely on one a person to, who is doing this task, but uh, we are also having 1.5 million collection that also needs to be fair valued. We are working towards a um, uh, procuring the services of um, a company that will also do this exercise for us. And we are in also in um, uh, bringing the staff of the NLSA on board to help us. We've had numerous engagements with the organized labor and staff to get the staff involved in, in assisting us because they know the collection better. They are in a better position to actually assist us in generating this list because they know the collection much better than most people who are from outside. So the plan that we have is fully dependent on the additional funding, we are currently sitting uh, with a shortfall of about three million for us to be able to complete this project at the, the time that we, which is obviously the the thirty first of March, so that we can present this register to to the Auditor General, and also uh, it's also dependent on uh, availability of the the specialized skills that we require to assist the NLSA to complete this exercise. Chair, I don't know if the CEO would like to add anything. Or on this, but uh, in terms of the grab project, uh, I would pause the chair. Thank you. Uh, the chairperson did tell you this next. No, thanks, chair. I think maybe for the committee to understand, as my colleague has indicated, the complexity we are dealing with collections of uh, the former. State Library and the former uh, uh, South African Library. And the, the, the two libraries, when they merged, they were all using different system. And I think for Comics to understand, when AG says there was no accurate, and in the process when uh, there was migration of records, some of the data got lost. And you will understand we are basically doing all this exercise manually. We verifying each item from the shelf and some of the items are not are on the shelves but they are not on the system so it's it's a and and, and like my colleague has indicated uh there are others in foreign languages i mean we don't have uh, those expertise internally so and when we started the project we were clear uh, with the department that we will not complete this project, considering that initially we allocated 32 million uh, to, I mean, and in all this, yes, and, and, and as the ED has indicated, we have managed to do certain activities. And 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 in the, when we started the project, we were hit by COVID. Uh, we, I mean, the, 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 these were some of the things that resulted in in the delays uh, for us to to move this speed, but I think primarily it's also uh, around the the issue of of of, of funding uh, because we 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 could have uh, gotten the necessary resources uh, to to help us meet the the necessary target at at, at speed. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Can we now move to Jolene, the acting uh, executive corp um, corporate services to attend to the questions around the HR related questions, questions around the unions and the questions around the facilities. Over to you, Jolene. We can't hear. Uh, uh, honorable we members, thank you. 
the questions that have been posed, I will deal with the first one around the recognition agreement between the NLSA and organized labor. At the NLSA, we have two unions. We have Nahawu and PSA. Nahawu is our majority union. Um, maybe for some uh, background information, we have a recognition agreement that was signed in uh, 2001 by the former national librarian and uh, CEO. Um, so that was always has always been in place. Uh, if you read the agreement, it does not have an expiry date. Um, that being said, we, we did recognize the need to update the recognition agreement to enter into a, a more current recognition agreement that um, spells out very clearly the relationship between management and organized labor. And so we embarked on a lengthy process of consultation with organized labor uh, in order to agree on this recognition agreement. Um, I think some of the reasons why it took us uh, quite a while to to conclude the recognition agreement, um, we had um, staff members who have since left the NLSA who started the uh, consultation processes. Um, for example, our our board secretary and our legal, who was also our legal advisor, um, started that process of consultation. We had the executive director of corporate services who also was part of that and has since left the employee of the NLSA. Uh, that being said, uh, uh, Chair, the, the consultation with with organized labor, because we, we were committed to signing a rec recognition agreement that everybody understood and was committed to, we did not uh, want to rush the consultation process. So uh, we made sure that we had numerous meetings um, to to consult on the recognition agreement. Um, we we eventually did find each other, and the recognition agreement was signed in May uh, uh, 2023. So um, and that is the recognition agreement that is now in place, and that guides uh, the relationship between management and organized labor. Um, and and I think I think that that's what I want to say about the relationship between unions and manage and management. I think we are both committed to to working together in a spirit of mutual uh, regard and respect. And I think we are guided by the recognition agreement with regards to responsibilities of both parties. Um, Chair, with regards to union to labor issues, um, we do have a current labor matter that was uh, at the CCMA. Um, and members that uh, we had a set down date uh, for Thursday and Friday last week, and that matter was concluded on on Friday. Um, I think that that is it on that on that, that point. I'd like to move on to the point of the leaking roof. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, for some background information, both our buildings in Cape Town, our Cape Town campus, and our Center for the Book are both heritage buildings. And I think you appreciate that when you are maintaining a heritage building, um, it does not is not as quick as, as maintaining a building that is not recognized in that regard. Um, so we have embarked on projects to um, fully assess the roof, uh, the roofs of both our, our buildings in Cape Town. And we are doing that with, with uh, the service providers. Um, so we have embarked on that project to really uh, do major repairs on, on the roof of both buildings. Um, we have applied to Heritage um, Council for uh, approval to work on, on, on the roofs. And um, Chair, I can confirm that we've received uh, feedback from uh, the Heritage Authority last week where they are granting us the approval, but they've put conditions in place because they are protecting the heritage status of, of those buildings. That being said, while we are embarking on this uh, major repair project, uh, we still obviously need to take care of the roofs, uh, especially during the rainy seasons. And so that's where the ad hoc work comes in, in terms of patching the roofs. Um, I can confirm that the first um, incident of the leaks that the honorable member mentioned, those leaks were fixed. Um, and we have since, um, as we have indicated in the, the answer to the parliamentary question, we have since um, uh, fixed other leaks on the roof. Um, and, and you will understand the necessity to do that while we are embarking on the major repair project. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Olin. Thank you, Chairperson. We're now moving to the uh, 
questions related to finance and audit, and I'll hand over to the CFO. Okay, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I'll start with a question on the cost uh, audit improvement, just to address on uh, other areas of the issues that AG raised. We have uh, started uh, implementing the biannual financial statement, uh, the preparation of it, and then uh, we are expecting to submit the first uh, set of the biannual financial statement to internal audit uh, by end of this month. And also we are now implementing the full uh, implementation of uh, GRAPA checklist. Those are one of the two uh, methods that we have implemented to address the issues of the uh, audit findings. Then on the issues relating to uh, holding staff accountability on the non-compliance, uh, we have, uh, as indicated, we have since uh, revised our supply chain management policy because it was old and the work gaps that we identified. So we have since revised that and it was approved by the board. And we uh, implemented also developed the standard operating procedures and checklist to support the policy. In that way, we are able to identify uh, uh, the stuff that uh, resulted in the non-compliance and we can then immediately uh, implement uh, consequence management processes on that. And also in addition, we have since uh, established the loss control committee, which basically assists in terms of uh, dealing with uh, also the old uh, regular expenditure and the footless and wasteful expenditure so that we can then uh, deal with the consequence management and the continuation and the right of uh, processes uh, relating to that. Then on the questions that relate to the 10, 10 million, uh, over 10 million that we owe to for municipal services, uh, the department had uh, approved 10.3 uh, uh, million to assist with the uh, long outstanding debt and the shortfall for the 22 23 uh, allocation on municipal services. So we are now left with the 3.8 million that we exist in terms of um, finding the 10, uh, the, the 10 million that is currently uh, outstanding. Then on the issues of uh, consultants, uh, the, uh, when we look at the AFS, the consultant of which uh, the 4 million that uh, uh, honorable member is referring to on the consultation is basically relating to uh, the management of our uh, faci uh, facility where we have appointed the, the service provider to assist us with the maintenance work. So that maintenance work that relates to uh, also uh, Cape Town office in terms of the repairs and all that. We have the uh, the engineers that are assisting in terms of uh, drafting the specification, also overseeing the work that is done in terms of all those maintenance. And that the funding for that is mainly uh, funded by our conditional grants relating to that. Thanks. Thank you, Chairperson. Okay. Okay. We're moving to the questions around programs. I'll hand over to the CEO. Okay. No, thanks, Chair, uh, Chair of the Board and Chairperson of the, the, the Chairperson. Uh, I think I'll assist with responding to the question that uh, Honorable Mama Bolo and Mutatua raised around program. Uh, I think uh, with regards to uh, other than the Library Week, what other programs is the entity uh, uh, presenting, we have the the world. Actually, how we design programs, we design our programs are national in nature. Uh, the provinces and the municipalities will have their their own programs that they conduct in 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 their respective libraries. But in collaboration with our provincial library services, we would uh, agree. Uh, on the national programs, which ones goes to to the program. Now what we are trying to do, we also align this program with some of the national day celebrations so that we we become part of of of, of the of the bigger uh, festivities and, and 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 promotion. And uh we have the National Read Aloud Month and the Disability Month that we also do with our sister uh, colleagues there from the South African uh, Library for the Blunt, 
and also we annually celebrate the National uh, Book Week. And with regard to uh, old books, uh, uh, Honorable Mama Bulu, we have a program that uh, we call the Reprint of Classics, which is also trying to bring back all those uh, indigenous languages back to 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 our communities. Uh, it's a very successful and 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 popular program. And around the issue of procurement of books, I think it was uh, raised by uh, Honorable Mteta. Uh, the, the National Library does not buy books. Uh, we get our uh, books through uh, the legal deposit uh, system, which basically we need to preserve these books. Uh, uh, but the public library, the provincial library, in terms of their mandate, they, they are the ones who are who are procuring books. And I know that there has been a challenge uh, from our colleagues in the provinces because, uh, I mean, I know, Honorable Mom, I mean, the issue of procurement of books, it's it's like, uh, it's a challenge. And we raise it with National Treasury uh, because we have discovered that uh, the current system of procurement of books is creating uh, some challenges where even the provinces at some point are not spending their money on buying books because they are required to get three quotations uh, when they buy book. I mean the the the, the uh, purchasing I mean a title is like an artist who creates his own quotation. So if you want uh, to get three quotations for I mean, those are some of the debates that uh, we are raising so that we can bring more books uh, to the libraries at speed without uh, uh, taking a long period and fill those shelves and our kids uh, can read. When I think, uh, I'm not sure what was the question was, but when I I tried to think it was around the issue of copyright, how do we protect uh, the rights of authors? Uh, members will recall that the Copyright Amendment Bill is currently before Parliament, and I think it's bringing some uh, new changes to protect the the author's rights and and then I think once that uh, bill has been passed, it will really uh, assist uh, in, in 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 protecting uh, the rights of 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 of, of uh, rights of authors around the collaborative programs that we do with only UNISA and uh, we don't only do it with UNI. We, uh, maybe it was the ones that we did because we. We have partnership with almost uh, all the LIS school, uh, library schools uh, in the country uh, because we feel that that's the sector that we we should collaborate collaborate more with. Uh, I mean, for example, there's one that we we have just uh, concluded, and we will be in the city of uh, Northwest and and and, and Zulu land. Uh, I mean the University of Zulu, the University of Northwest. They they are in the process of establishing a library school uh, in that part of our tree, and we are collaborating with them. Uh, also, the University of 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 Zululand. Uh, our next reading summit uh, will be done in partnership. I mean, also with Fundam Zanzi, uh, we we collaborate uh, with 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 them. And I think there was also a question, I think, by Honorable Mama Bulu around, uh, I'm not sure, around our responsibility between uh, the, or oh, it's, it's Honorable Mtetwa, uh, around the, I think the, the National Library uh, and, and the Provincial Library Services has got two different mandates. The, the, the National Library's responsibility is more on 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 preservation and 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 the public library service is basically rendered by by the provincial uh, library services which basically manages the day to day access of library services to our communities in 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 the respective provinces and communities uh, working uh, together with uh, our local authorities uh, thank you chair i think yeah, I will pause there, Chair. Thank you very much, CEO. The, I'll, I'll take the questions around the governance and the whistleblowing, uh, also the allegations. 
Um, the the um, the whistleblow um uh, communication came through uh, came to us through the department. It uh, it was very difficult for us to implement the protection of the whistleblower by the fact that it is an anonymous uh, submission. So uh, with regards to uh, responding to the question, what are we doing in terms of protecting the whistleblower? It has uh, it has been a challenge because uh, it, since since uh, all the submissions we've received with regards to whistleblowing, they they are all they come as uh, anonymous. So uh, it, we do have a policy which actually outlines on how we should be protecting the whistleblowers. But in this case, as the uh, the submissions are anonymous, then we are even uh, unable to protect the whistleblower. With regards to, um, again, the questions around um, the number of uh, issues that were raised, the question was, uh, what is our mitigation plan in terms of the questions that were raised uh, from the whistleblower? Um, firstly, we responded to our best ability in terms of uh, the issues that were raised and uh, also provided evidence where we did. And uh, as mentioned earlier on that, most of them were uh, repeat questions, okay. repeat concerns, repeat uh, 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 allegations. So uh, we then uh, um, responded to make sure that uh, we are, uh, and uh, I'm sure the chairperson will agree with me, when uh, questions comes as in uh, um, without evidence, and uh, again, yeah, as, a, that, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a way of reporting the observation, or perhaps even there is evidence that we don't have, we don't have view of, we respond based on our understanding and knowledge of the situation. So we currently are very much excited with regards to how this matter can be is going to be addressed, where, uh, given the department uh, uh, process that they are implementing from the point of getting a, uh, a, 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 a the, 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 the investigation of all the matters that have been raised. In our view, that will try and give us a, a, an opportunity to address and mitigate some of those issues that have been raised. Because at the moment, we've been responding based on how we understand and how we know the situation and based on our facts that we are sitting with. And they are that, but and it goes without saying that uh, uh, the whistleblower or blowers are not getting satisfied of with our responses, and possibly they are they come across as being very subjective or either way. So uh, the uh, the move that the department is uh, taking it's of great importance to us, and of as they, and hence we said we are greatly excited about uh, this move because it will definitely assist us in mitigating again all those questions and the concerns that have. Been been raised from uh, from the whistleblower, and the uh, the question around what was the yeah uh, what was the uh, um, involvement of the uh, the union with regards to uh, to the whistleblower, uh, we we uh, we tried to secure a meeting with the uh, with the unions. Uh, unfortunately, the first uh, meeting that was scheduled, uh, we were unable to form a quorum. And uh, we then had to uh, move, postpone the meeting. And uh, when they are uh, through our through the acting uh, board secretary, uh, try, when he was trying to uh, secure the second meeting, as agreed in the meeting that we had in the meeting that did not happen, that we are going to have a meeting with the Afghanas Labour because they raised the same questions, the questions that we were sitting with from the whistleblower. They also raised them, and we wanted to. Ask address them with them so that we can have a, 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 a collaborative approach in terms of uh, attending to some of these issues. Unfortunately, they came back to us through the company, the acting company, uh, the board secretary to say to us, they have escalated the matter to the department. So basically that matter was then out of our hands and we are unable to collaborate and also to communicate with them in details in addressing that. So the involvement in terms of specifically the whistleblower issues with the, with the, with the with the, with the organized labor has gone that far. However, I need to reiterate and confirm that uh, with all other matters and related activities, programs and so on, where organized labor is always abreast, it's always being involved, and they have been recognized as it has been reported earlier on by the acting uh, ED um, 
uh, corporate services. So um, I'm going to leave it there, Chairperson. And uh, if we have omitted uh, any of the questions, uh, apologies, but we are still available to provide answers. And uh, thank you very much once more again for the uh, for the opportunity. Over to you. Thank you so much, um, uh, Chairperson. I'm seeing that there are follow up questions. Uh, before I give it department, let me take follow up questions. The department is going to respond with the entire the first and second questions. Honorable Teto and Honorable Veronica. That ought. To be. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm not happy with the the answers given by the CEO. Uh, it, it it clearly shows that he didn't un understand my question. Uh, I wasn't talking about protection of uh, of copyright and and yeah, I was referring to assistance given to those up and coming writers, authors who do not have capital to start the process of writing their own book, so that the ownership remains with them before they go into trading. Because what normally happens, the ones who come and fund, they take ownership based on them being the ones who fund it. Now, the issue of rights ceases to exist, but a privilege given to the one who commissions. That's what is happening even with Philip. But then I, I hope you will look into that to say how as... A, a, a structure that is given responsibility. I'm not interested about pre preservation of Jan van der Beek's histories and that. We know our history was not correctly done. We need to start now in investing towards the future so that we correct what was non preservation of histories that we don't know. But anyway, the issue of what specific initiatives does NSA intend to implement to facilitate the integration of 4IR, because as I hear they're speaking about manual. We are now in the era of 4IR, technologies and resources in libraries throughout the country. In ensuring that citizens have equitable access to these resources that we are talking about. The second one is, are there any plans or interventions at NSA to improve the early literacy skills of grade one to four learners to empower them to read for, meaning my eyes are, are getting bad, eh? meaning especially in underprivileged communities where these issues are more prevalent. And, and, and I did not hear on your presentation speaking about 4IR, how are you moving towards you know, um, uh, uh, preparing yourself for that space because this accessibility could be easily done through 4IR, not the manual uh, preservation of Ian van der Beek's histories. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable uh, and Tetra, Honorable Van Dijk. Chairperson, I just want to find out when the last National Council for Library and Information Services was appointed by the Minister. Um, I understand this is supposed to be done in consultation with our committee, but the last gazette calling for nominations was uh, to serve on the council was 17 August 2018, um, with a term of the council being 1 January 2019 to 3 1 December 2022. I want to know has the term of the council been extended, and if so, has Parliament been informed about this extension? Thank you, Honourable um, uh, Honourable Chairperson of National Library of South Africa. Thank you very much, Chairperson, and thanks for the questions. I'm going to allow the CEO to uh, respond to all the questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. CEO. Hello. No, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson and uh, Honorable Ntetwa for, for clarifying the, the question. 
Yes, in terms of the what specific program that we have regarding to for IR, uh, I must indicate uh, uh, that uh, we were actually this week we received four uh, interns uh, who are programmers uh, who will be stationed at the National Library uh, for the next 12 to 24 months. And basically, uh, those are the uh, learners who are completing their their programming studies and with the generosity of uh, the MIC CETA. Uh, as members will recall, I mean, many years, I mean, almost we once received a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates to uh, connect uh, internet ICT in our library. So this uh, young intense will help us to revolutionize our ICT uh, uh, in our libraries to get towards the the four IR and uh, yeah I think uh, this were the skills that we didn't have in the national library and we hope that uh, with their ex uh, learning experience they will help us uh, navigate these new trends uh, within helping in particular also the the public library. Uh, with regard to promoting early literacy, uh, the National Library has a formal partnership uh, with Nali Bali, uh, uh, and we know that uh, Nali Bali is, is is very resourceful in helping uh, schools and communities in inculcating and supporting early literacy uh, within our communities. And uh, we 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 have just concluded a national survey in uh, understanding the reading habits and pattern. And uh, if you go to the uh, our, the, the national barometer, uh, it's uh, uh, www.barometer.co.za. Uh, uh, and I think it, uh, that's where most of uh, the, the current trends uh, are. And with regard to the community publishing, uh, uh, assisting young, uh, writers. The National Library has got a program uh, that we call uh, community publishing. What we do, we assist, we uh, evaluate manuscripts, and after evaluating manuscript, we assist those uh, manuscripts that have been successful, and we to print uh, almost 300 books uh, that the young authors can uh, go and sell and, and, and start uh, producing more so that they can they can make more money. So the startup kit is that once your manuscript has been uh, processed and went through the our rigorous process, then the NLSA assist this uh, imaging publishers to at least print 300 books that they can sell. And with the process, they can reproduce uh, uh, more books. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. I think those were the questions. I think I'll ask uh, I think the other one is basically with the appointment of the Enclis, uh, uh, it will be the department that chair will respond. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, CEO. Uh, can I, I, I take this opportunity to give it to the acting DG and the last one is going to be our DM. Thank you. Chair, uh, with your permission, I'm just looking at my time. Okay. Not unless okay. the teacher is promising that she, uh, she's going to be short. Because remember, I have to get to another yeah. meeting at half past 11. Uh, can can, can DG uh, promise that you are going to be short in order that the uh, M must say something? Mm. I can't. I can't make well, a promise. Oh, I, I I know <laughs> he cannot. She cannot make a promise. At the let me, let know, me come in first. Uh, then you no, come rather first. come first. Uh, yes. Uh, can't be short. I know. Yes. Yes. No. No. no that's I what I just I wanted know. to to have <laughs> that understanding. Thank you so much, Chair, and uh, thank you very much to the members of the portfolio committee, and. Uh, and the NLSA and the department for for coming and 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 I just want to first appreciate um, 
the, the members of the portfolio committee uh, for interrogating and interacting with this report. And actually, you know, um, asking pertinent questions, which probably if the, if the NLSA is noting, uh, some of these questions will be able to help them to improve on the performance as, as the entity. Um, of course, um, uh, my friend, uh, Honorable Mtetwa, you know, I can't uh, pass without uh, talking to you. Uh, of course, I know that you don't care much about the preservation of the history, but the reality of the situation is that we are sitting here, the NLSA is having qualified audit three consecutive financial years. And the reason is simply because they are unable to actually do this preservation properly because that's one of their core functions. So as, as much as, uh, as a person, you, you do not care, but the reality is that one of the reasons why we are having problems is exactly what you don't care about. <laughs> And um, uh, to the NSA, I just wanted through you, uh, uh, Chair and the Department, I'm, I'm a bit worried about the fact that NLSA has two unions, uh, if I heard well, Nehau, which is recognized, they've got a recognition agreement with Nehau, and they have PSA on, 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 on the premises. And from, from the responses I have had, some of the uh, complaints, some of them came through the unions as well. But the, the response is that they have not been able to meet mm -hmm. with the unions through the fact that uh, the first meeting, they didn't have a quorum. And, then, and, and mm -hmm. then the last time the union said they have escalated the issues to the department. I think for me, much as we, we can listen to that, it also talks to probably a breakdown of relationship between the unions yeah. and the NLSA. And we need to look closer to that. And I would love for the, for the management of NLSA to actually uh, give the department a, how would you I put it, some some proof of the meetings that they have tried to call with the unions. Because my worry, Chair, is that, so that is that, does that mean that there has been no meeting with the unions at all? And I think that's something that we just need to look at and, and get worried about. I'm very happy though about how they have managed uh, the issue of the whistleblowing in terms of what they call the, miti the, 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 the mitigation plan and they mm. and and uh, and according to them they are very happy with what the department is doing to take this forward in terms of now taking it to a proper investigation they support that and because according to them it will also help them to resolve this matter once and for all but chair i think for me what before i leave i am very worried about the fact that three consecutive years, mm -hmm. NLSA has had a qualified audit. And sitting where I am sitting, I am not seeing a mitigation plan, mm -hmm. so to speak. A mitigation plan that says, this is what we think we will do to avoid a fourth qualified audit. Because from, from, from what I have been listening to, it means we are going to sit with this qualified audit until Jesus Christ comes, because for them, they don't have the money to do what the AG has, is picking up, and there's no hope that they, they will have this money. I want to suggest and propose that maybe, just maybe, the NLSA must actually sit down and put a mitigation plan to say this is what we think should be done to avoid a fourth and you know uh, 
qualified audit, even if at the end of the day, things that they put in there might not be met. But let's see an effort, an effort that says we are worried about this qualified audit and this is what we think should be done to avoid it. They can share that mitigation plan with the department, they can share that mitigation plan with the portfolio committee so mm. that at least all of us can see that there is an effort to try and not be comfortable to have this qualified audit forever because suddenly they, 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 there is no budget to do what they should be doing. That's just my worry there, uh, Chair, which I think for me is something that lacks uh, from the NLSA, for lack of a better word, lacks innovative thinking in terms, they seem to think that we are sitting in this problem, there's nothing we can do, we will, we will then sit with this qualified audit. There's nothing, there's, they, we can't do anything about it. That's just my worry. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you, DM. I'm suspecting you are sharing uh, what you we are all worried about before you, le you, you, you leave us. Uh, as I was saying that, because of the cut of budgets, which means we really coming years uh, will be sitting to this. Uh, but OAG did uh, talk to them, and they are saying they are having plan. Maybe really that plan they must share with you department and also with us. Thank you so much, DM. You are released. Um, uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Chairperson, members. Thank you, uh, DM and colleagues. Um, they, they were um, uh, not a lot, but there were questions that were directed to the department that we would like to mm -hmm. respond to, uh, Chair. Um, matters that are related to the board uh, around what the department is doing to address the issue of gender representation going forward. But perhaps we'd link that question with the question around the term of office of the current board, um, question that came from Honorable Member Van Dyke, um, and um, all related matters that we're talking to issues of board. But also, Chair, we would like to also talk to the issues related uh, to libraries, um, just um, uh, to come in in relation to some of the questions that uh, Honorable Member Mtetwa raised with regard to the libraries. Um, I think the CEO did touch on the fact that um, the issue of the building of libraries, etc., uh, et are not within their mandate, but we just want to come in a bit uh, more on that one. But before I hand over to my colleagues, uh, DTT Mandisa, together with uh, Mr. Tsanyane, who's the oversight, uh, who's public entity oversight director, together with the Jin Dima and Mr. Kekane, the chief director libraries, just to talk to those issues, as I indicate. I just want to just uh, continue on what the deputy minister was talking to uh, with regard to um, the, the issue of compliance to GREP 103 the issue of um, the heritage assets, just, just to add a, a bit more on that. The CFO did indicate um, in, in the slide where they were talking about interventions, uh, Chair, um, he did indicate that uh, as a department, we have approved uh, the use of the cash surpluses for 2022-23 and uh, to fund a portion, obviously, to fund a portion of the shortfall. Um, which would assist perhaps <clears throat> in them also being able to just move um, the the gap uh, in terms of the percentage um, shortfall, um, you know, just a bit forward. However, I I needed to just indicate to the members of the portfolio that the the the, the other reason um, why the department couldn't just uh, say they would assist with the shortfall. Um, be it three million or be it how, however uh, the amount uh, of the shortfall is, is because the part of the allegations that uh, are going to have to be investigated, they talk to the movement 
of the diversion of some of the funds that were meant for Grab, Grab 103 to other budget items. So the department, in other words, cannot be seen to be ignoring that. Yes, it's going to, to be subjected to an in, independent investigation. Yes, we are not saying the entity is at fault. However, we need to actually not be responding and assisting the entity by just saying we'd have, even if we had it, uh, Chair, I know with the austerity measures and the cuts that we have experienced, we are also facing um, serious constraints uh, financially. But I'm just saying, Chair, even if we did have that budget, we, we were not going to be able to just ignore the fact that one of the issues was that the, 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 the previously uh, allocated budget was diverted so that we put that matter to rest. So we are hoping that as the entity talks about um, how the plan that they are putting in place, they're looking at issues of how they can reprioritize their budget. For instance, I'm making an example chair, uh, so that we ensure that come the end of March, we are not sitting in the same position that we've been sitting um, at for the last three years. Yeah. But we will follow up as a department in terms of dealing with the issue of the audit action plan and the mitigating measures that also DM was speaking to. It becomes incumbent on us as a department to do so. I just mm. wanted to add that, Chair, but allow me now to just um, um, uh, hand over to DDG Mandisa and Mr. Zanyane on, on the first issues that I mentioned. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Mandisa. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Salo. Thank you, Chairperson. Mandisa. Mandisa. Mandisa, you have a twin of Chairperson Refuel. When she spoke, I was oh. thinking it's you who's speaking. Your voice are the same. Go on, Mandisa. And that is uh, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, honorable members uh, as well. Uh, ATG, not sure the Deputy Minister is still in the meeting. Greetings to all. Um, I think uh, I'm, I'm just going to add uh, to the fact that, yes, uh, the department had made some allocation in terms of uh, monies towards Grab 103. Uh, but uh, to echo what uh, DG is saying, uh, to say we had to look at something else before we say more. But I'm also tying this with uh, something else that was mentioned in terms of the municipality bills, the utility bills, because uh, before we uh, got uh, into uh, this information about uh, the movement of funds, uh, when we were still talking about what else to do, we also realized that uh, the entity, the library, was one of those that was under pressure in terms of these utility bills. So, yes, I can confirm uh, which uh, something that was hanging as a question to say, did we do it or not, uh, to assist the, 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 the entity. Last year, the entity received about uh, 10 million, which uh, was an approval for them to use uh, some interest funds that were available towards this, even though we know that that amount did not fully cover the, 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 the bill at hand. Um, so I'm trying to say for the difference, uh, they still had to do some reprioritization, something perhaps that also uh, hindered them in their own reprioritization to allocate more funding to 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 this uh, Grab 103 project. Um, uh, whilst this is a matter that um, is at hand, we've already asked them for a report uh, since the inception of this. I think that was uh, the beginning of 2017, 18. That's when this uh, uh, item came to fall to say there is this challenge of unreconciled accounts, but. Uh, Gradually, we do see that at least uh, the, 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 there is some movement that is made, but we shall confirm very well in terms of that movement as we see the reports that's coming to us. About uh, the, the term of, of, the, of, the, of the board, uh, I was trying hard to connect with the question because the, the board has recently been reconstituted, uh, actually, uh, if I count my years in the department, it's less than three years 
and that um, reconstitution has been done whilst I, I was already here in the department. So counting from there, this board, um, its term expires, I think, in September 2024. So there hasn't been um, a, an extension, at least in the last two years, moving forward to 2024 when they do another cycle. Um, so it's on after 2024 September that we are going to be looking at what next. What mm -hmm. next is also going to be uh, influenced and affected by uh, where we are in terms of the amalgamation process. Um, and this takes me to the question about uh, gender uh, representation. When we started with this board, we did not start uh, too badly. I think it was four females out of uh, uh, nine, uh, so it was four, four females, five uh, males, but uh, in the process, one of the females has left. Uh, so when one member leaves, we are left with the residual pool of people that were interviewed and found to be suitable, though not appointed at that time. So it so happened in this case that those were just males, two males or three. So we had to make a choice from what is already in, exist in existence um, because we were not going to re-advertise. But the beauty as we are moving forward in, in the event, another female leaves now, um, we definitely looking at the situation um, to a point that we are discussing to say in the grouping of the entities according to the amalgamation recommendations. Now we are looking at the possibility of uh, just taking from other councils uh, to fill up uh, when uh, there is another council member that has left within entities that are part of that group in the grouping of the entities in the amalgamation process, which uh, at least it's our cover to say uh, we will always uh, get a, a female when we are looking for a female um, as different from when we are going to the pool of people that were interviewed and found to be suitable. Uh, as I say, in this case, the short change was that we were left with uh, males when the event oh. happened that one female left. I think those were the key questions uh, that uh, uh, are directed to the department uh, uh, DG that, that I picked up uh, for my response. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I see there is a follow-up um, question. Sorry, Chair, I'm not trying to take over your question in the, uh, your, your meeting, in the meeting chat. I'm just saying, while I hand over to Didi Jindima, I, I see that Honorable Member Van Dyke is, is asking when it was brought to the committee, this uh, pr uh, process of the, of the board. Uh, my understanding is that it would not, because those that would be brought to the board is by uh -huh. virtue of the legislation that dictates that, for instance, the pencil, um, hence it went uh, through that. But the others, they would follow the normal processes as depicted um, in the founding legislation of that particular entity. But maybe Didi Jindima, uh, sorry, Didi Jimandisa can expand on, on that once she has read the meeting chat or or, or so. Uh, Didi Jindima, meanwhile, on the libraries. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, ADG. Uh, greetings to the chairperson of the committee, to the members, honorable members of the committee. Um, if the uh, deputy minister is still here, I also extend my greetings to her, and I extend my greetings also to the chairperson of the NLSA, as well as the CEO. Uh, maybe just, uh, it's very important that we come in here, uh, uh, chairperson. Um, just to clarify certain things. And I think that the CEO had already spoken to that. More particularly, the building of libraries, that it is not within their purview. And, and I would like to explain this by indicating that as a department, we are coordinating the implementation of a conditional grant for the establishment and upgrading of public libraries. This process started in 2007, 2008 financial year. At that particular point in time, it was just uh, 200 million 
that was a starting uh, conditional grant. As we speak, the program is now standing at 1.5 billion in the current financial year. And I think um, it's very important that we indicate to the, uh, to the uh, committee that uh, to date, the grant has established 247 new libraries and uh, upgraded 718 libraries. And through this grant, I think this is a very important point, the department has also established 259 mini libraries for the blind to ensure that print disabled members of the community also have access to information. And maybe I think that this matter also has been uh, covered by the CEO to a, a greater degree, but also it's very important that we speak to this because as the department of it got an interest in the 4IR, um, it's very important to indicate that the current allocation for the library grant makes provision for the rollout of ICT programs, like internet services, as well as other ICT gadgets. But also it must be noted that most of the public libraries are currently providing free internet services. We have also partnered with other stakeholders like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and I think the CEO also spoke to that in the past to upgrade the ICT infrastructure for li public libraries. In fact, the foundation contributed an initial amount of 32 million rands, while through the conditional grant, provinces are actually spending on average 100 million rand yearly. So I think that was very important that we highlight that point. But also just to augment the point that has been uh, uh, already uh, made by the uh, NLSA and also in reaction to the uh, Honorable Mamabolo, we, we, we are collaborating with the National Library of, of South Africa um, in funding the reprinting of the African classic projects, whose objective is to ensure the availability of classics in indigenous languages. Uh, some of these uh, publications were out of print and they are now being printed. So it's just more about languages, uh, indigenous languages, but it's just about uh, being transported to the defining spirit or mood of a particular period of history as shown by the ideas and beliefs of the time. Reading these uh, classics, it really takes you, it drives you memory lane. Now, the last part that I want to talk to is the current, uh, NCLES, which is the National Council of Library and Information Services term. This term was extended by a year because the council is currently busy with the review of the NCLES Act. Their term will now expire in June next year. I would like to stop the uh, uh, chairperson and, and, and ADG. Thank you. Um, um. Mr. Chairperson, Chair thank you very much. Um, I'm not, uh, can I just check, did it, Jimandisa, you still want to expand on, I think, uh, did it, Jindima, I had him addressing the latter part uh, of his response through you, Chair. Uh, th thanks, uh, Chair Chairperson. Uh, um, I don't want to expand, but I just want to be sure that is addressing the NCLIS because that's the part. I I know I did not cover because I was not sure what we are referring to because I was also reading the 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 chart from from member Van Dijk. So if Titi Jindima can confirm he, he has covered that part, I'm fine. If I can come in. Th thank you. Uh, chairperson through you. Um, yes, I'm covering the National Council uh, of Library Information Services. That's the council that uh, Honorable Van Dijk was uh, referring to, and that's the one that we are saying their term of office has been extended by a year. It's only going to expire in June next year, and the reason that I've stated is, is that they are busy um, 
reviewing the current legislation. So we had to extend so that they complete that process. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Didi My chairperson, just in conclusion, uh, perhaps in our responses, I wanted just to also contribute some information with regard to the support that uh, is being given to the authors. Um, just to uh, also indicate that over and above what has been mentioned, um, may maybe if honorable members recall in our presentation of the programs that we are doing this financial year, we spoke to what we call a publishing hub. And a publishing hub um, approach is, um, as I, I ind indicated previously, is where we continuously trying to find ways of uh, best supporting, especially emerging authors. And we've partnered with ANFASA, which is an association that works with authors that write academic, but also nonfiction uh, works. But they also it also goes into the areas of the fiction, but of of the fiction works or fiction uh, books. Um, it's it's one of those programs that, as I'm saying, chair, we continuously trying to improve. It started slowly over the previous financial years, but with this part partnership that we are having with Anfasa, that is looking at supporting. Um, a total of about 25 uh, authors or, uh, yeah, authors, um, if I can put it like that, through submission of their manuscripts, et cetera, and those get evaluated and funded. Um, it's it's one kind of support over and above what NLSA and what uh, Dima's unit of libraries is um, also looking at. I just wanted to contribute uh, that as well, uh, Chairperson, in, in just... Um, finalizing our response and, and concluding our response as a department to the questions that we thought were addressed to us specifically. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you so much, DG, uh, uh, with uh, the entire uh, crew from the office. Um, I want to take this opportunity to thank honorable members. Uh, that's what oversight is and and thinking that uh, if you new department through the leadership you are so transparent because this question of e interventions uh, of giving e cash surplus uh, was supposed to be put it up upright and maybe to be one of a indication of interventions that the department did come with. And, and thank you to tell us that you were not going to do any other thing uh, because of it diversions. And uh, we know that uh, the boards are come and go, but we are not saying that uh, because you did come was this ABC, you cannot improve. And uh, when we're here, we are all leaders of the country. When we discuss, uh, we are discussing in order that we must be given uh, the information and we must see the gaps. And these gaps, our department will try and assist uh, to get to sit down with the, any entity and as well as your good selves, uh, not uh, to saying that uh, we are not recognizing some other improvements that we have done, where we have 100%, where we have 69%, where we have uh, 30%. It, it, it's not on. Let me take this opportunity to saying that hoping that uh, Chairperson uh, you will come to the office and 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 create uh, something that will make us uh, next time to be proud of you saying that that's what we were expecting from you uh, and then uh, I think that uh, also the department uh, also, you should send formal communication to re the extension uh, of the term of the uh, 
uh, NCLIS. Yeah. Uh, I'm taking this opportunity to thank you, Ministry, DM, uh, uh, and, and also the chairperson. Uh, now I'm releasing you all. <clears throat> thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yes. Thank you, thank I managed you, Chair. to keep on online when I was driving. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much, Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank, 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 thank you to all of you. Thank you so much. Malbongwe. Kamala Makoskas. Um, as we are now uh, uh, getting to our own uh, program, which uh, we are doing well with time, whilst really we did ask so many questions. Thank you, honorable members. Uh, now I'm tabling the minutes uh, of 20th of October uh, in front of you. Go on, uh, Jabul. <clears throat> Hi, Mama Loman. Yeah. We're not yet done, members. Honorable <laughs> hey, Joseph, we're not yet done. Switch your mics. <laughs> uh, honorable members, it's one of the day that we took our own time interacting. Uh, can uh, honorable members uh, adopt these minutes as our true reflection of that day? I can't see any hand. Um, honorable yeah. members. Yeah. 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 Dennis Joseph. Yes, Dennis. Uh, yeah. You didn't close your mic. <laughs> um, yes, okay. Apology. Yes. Chairperson, the minutes of the 20th. 20th. Yes. I, I put in an apology. I was not present, but I put in an apology. Okay. okay. Uh, you, you must note that. Thank uh, you. Uh, Jamu. Uh, Honorable Zondi. Yeah, I propose that we. We adopt the minute. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Sibia. Yeah, Honorable, we are seconding, Chairperson. Honorable Adams. I don't know who's seconding. I'm, I'm, Honorable yeah. Adams. It's Mama Wolo. No, you can't Adam. just shout to Honorable Mama Wolo. The, 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 the norm is so you raise your hand. Uh, I've said Honorable Sibia. Honorable Adams. Honorable Smith. Yes. Okay, you are speaking at the same time. Uh, the minutes have been adopted uh, accordingly. Uh, let's get the second set of the minutes. I'm seconding the, the, the minutes as adopted, Chair. Yes, I I did note that.
this uh, also a uh, uh, west of the day with members they were still focused i'm presenting this minutes to you honorable members uh, to reflect or to adopt any proper uh, honorable malomani honorable adams honorable malomani Thank you, Chair. I move for the adoption of the minutes as presented. Thank you, Honorable Malumane. Honorable Adams. Chairperson, I second on the adoption of the minutes. Thank you. Thank you. The minutes are adopted. Can I take this opportunity to thank our staff, starting from the Secretariat, researchers, uh, uh, what the what is other crew which is here, content advisors, all staff which are present here. We cannot do this uh, and complete this work without you. You are not forgotten. We are thanking you and also our own members that uh, they are taking their work very serious. Thank you, the honorable members. The meeting is adjourned. Oh, I'm so I find now. What I am